Hey guys, Will here. Welcome back to the channel. Now, as you can see, I have my three 35-inch EX3501R BenQ monitors mounted again. Thank you very much to John from Racecraft Simulations for supplying me with some temporary mounting solutions while I come up with my own solution. But anyway, the point of this video today is I want to show you how I've set up NVIDIA Surround to work with these monitors. Now, I know that these monitors specifically have been problematic for people trying to set up NVIDIA Surround at the native resolution, but I'm also aware that a lot of people have been having problems with ultra-wide monitors in general with um, with NVIDIA Surround not, uh, not supporting the native resolutions of the panels, and you end up with all sorts of horrible distorted pictures and wrong resolutions and stuff like that. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is basically take you through the entire process of how to fix this. Now, there's a, there is a software package that you're going to have to download, and I will link that in the description below. So go ahead and do that first before you watch the video. Now, I also want to preface this by saying that it's, I wouldn't say that this is risky, but there is a chance that if you type in wrong values or you go fiddling, you can actually damage your monitors doing this. What we're going to actually be doing is modifying the EDID data for the monitors. Now, we're not actually modifying the, the firmware itself on the monitor. We're, we're modifying the driver so that the, so that the Windows software actually detects the EDID data differently from what it's actually fed from the monitor. So if that doesn't make any sense to you, that is okay. It's, um, it'll all become pretty clear once we, once we actually get stuck into this. But basically, the EDID data is what actually tells Windows what the monitor is, what inputs and outputs it has, what resolutions and refresh rates it supports, what color profiles it supports, and things like that. So without that data, the monitor basically won't work. That's what tells it when you plug it in, what resolutions to show you in the control panel and stuff like that so at a very basic level anyway that's a very basic description but that's essentially what you need to know for the context of this video so what you can see here I'll just jump down quickly to the other scene here in OBS so you can see here I've got my panel running at 10320 or 10,320 10, pixels wide by 1440 high so I've got three panels, each of which are 3440 by 1440. So you can see that that is the native resolution of the panel spanned across all three. Obviously three times 3440 is 10320, and then the vertical resolution remains the same because we haven't stretched that at all. And you can also see here that I do have G-Sync running as well. It's detected as a G-Sync monitor because these are FreeSync compatible monitors which work with the new NVIDIA drivers. Uh, so that's an important little thing there as well to note. Also, also note that I have 100 hertz here selected as well. So I'm running not only at the native resolution, but also at the native refresh rate for these panels. So if you've ever tried to achieve this before, you would have found that in many cases, the resolution that it selects by default is something like 11, 11, 520 by 2056 or something like that. What it's trying to do essentially is it's trying to use a 4K resolution across the panels and then span that across all three. Now, the reason for that is that these monitors in particular and also a lot of other ultra wide monitors, um, for some reason, they they include 4K resolution in their, in their supported resolution formats, even though the native resolution of the panel is lower than that. And what, that, what ends up happening is you end up with a stretched image. So if you've ever tried to display 4K resolution on an ultra-wide monitor, obviously 4K being one, one um, aspect ratio and ultra-wide being another, if you try to display a 4K resolution on a native panel that doesn't support 4K, you get either a stretched image vertically or horizontally, or it squishes it down and it just it just looks terrible. But obviously, then if you try to span that across three screens, it looks even worse. It stretches everything and it just becomes a nightmare. So what I'll do now is I'll undo all the hard work that I've done to get this set up, go back to the scratch settings, and I'll show you exactly how I achieved this. Okay, so we're set up completely from scratch here with no modifications so that I can show you exactly what would normally happen. So we go into our NVIDIA control panel, bring it up on the screen here for you now, and you can see if we go to change resolution, We'll get our three monitors there. Now I've got one of them connected via HDMI, which is the reason why it's not showing up as a G-Sync, and the other two are connected by DisplayPort. The reason for that is simply because my 1080 Ti that I'm running in this machine at the moment only has two DisplayPorts. I uh, do have plans to pick up a 2080 Ti pretty soon to alleviate that problem, but as it turns out, it hasn't really been that big of an issue anyway. But you can see here we've got 3440 by 1440 
native resolution here and we can choose between 100 hertz or 60 hertz we won't worry about changing that right now because it doesn't really matter for what we're doing here but then if we go set up multiple displays we don't need to save the changes and we go to Nvidia Surround and apply you can see here that um, we've got a crazy resolution and we can't change it. There's no way that we can change that resolution. And if we apply that resolution, we end up with a horribly distorted screen. I'll just quickly apply it now. It's probably going to throw things out of whack. So you can see there on my screen, everything's all small and distorted and just horrible. So we're going to undo that again because obviously we don't want to do this. So yeah, you can see that you can't select the native resolution of the panels. And the reason for that, as I mentioned at the start of the video, is that the EDID data for these monitors is not incorrect, but um, it's telling it that the maximum resolution is a resolution that can't be supported by the, um, by the system, which is very strange. I don't understand why they do that. But anyway, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Okay, so to fix this problem, we need to download a little utility called CRU or Custom Resolution Utility. The link is in the description below to download that. Now you've got four executables here. You've got CRU, which is the main program. You've got Reset All, which resets the modifications to the EDID data. And then you've got Restart and Restart 64-bit. So 64-bit is obviously if you're running a 64-bit operating system. The standard one is if you're running a 32-bit. Most people, I would imagine, are running 64-bit operating systems by now. So if you make a mistake or you screw something up, you will need to reset the, reset the data and then reset the driver as well. All the screens will disappear, then they'll come back up and everything will be back to normal. So it's important to understand here, as I said before, we're not actually modifying the firmware of the monitors. All we're doing is modifying how Windows actually interprets that data. So if we do make a mistake, we can go back and reset everything. Uh, just important to note that if you do force the monitor to display a refresh rate or you know something that it's not designed to do, you can actually damage the monitor physically. So don't go around and fiddle trying to overclock your monitor or anything like that unless you know exactly what you're doing. But basically, we open up the CRU.exe and you can see here we've got our three BenQ displays which are currently active. So you're going to need to make this modification to all of the monitors that you're wanting to run in surround. So you can see here we've got three BenQ displays here in the drop down menu. I'm only going to show you on one of them because we're just repeating the same steps over and over again, but you will need to do this to all three. So you can see down here we've got a whole bunch of different resolutions and stuff. You can see we've got the native resolution of 3440 by 1440 at 60 hertz here. Now obviously these are a 100 hertz panel. And you can see here we've got a bunch of standard resolutions as well. Now the area that we need to modify is down under this extension block here. So you click on this profile and click edit. And you can see here under detailed resolutions, you've got the native resolution of the panel all the way up to 100 hertz. But down here under TV resolutions and HDMI support, you've got some resolutions that are designed to allow it to support 4K resolution, even though that's not the native resolution of the panel. Now what happens is Nvidia Surround detects the maximum resolution that the monitor is telling Windows it can display, and then it uses that by default and doesn't give you a way to change that. So what we need to do is we need to remove the references to this resolution that we don't want to support anymore. So we delete all of the references to 3840 by 2160, and then we click OK. And then we go down to HDMI support as well. And down here, we want to do exactly the same thing. Remove those references to 3840 by 2160. And that fixes the problem. We hit OK. And then we hit OK again. And then we want to select the next monitor and do exactly the same thing again. And then once you're done, you hit OK. I'm going to hit Cancel because I've already made the modification previously. And then you want to double click on Reset 64, which will reset your graphics driver. And then we can go back in and reconfigure our monitors at the correct resolutions. So once your display driver has restarted and your monitors are back up and running, we want to right click on the desktop. Just anywhere on the desktop is fine. Go to Display Settings. And then we want to scroll down to our advanced display settings here. And what we want to do now, you can see here they've defaulted to 3440 by 1440, which is fine for resolution, but you can see they're running at 60 hertz, which is not what we want. So we want to go into our display properties for each individual one, click on monitor, click on refresh rate, and select 100 hertz. Hit apply, 
the monitor should disappear for a moment and you can see now we've got 3440 by 1440 at 100 hertz go down to the next one and do exactly the same thing again so we go monitor refresh rate 100 hertz whoops I'm using my mouse on my lap here so it's a little bit sketchy hit apply so we're going to go through exactly the same process for all three monitors once we're done we should see 3440 by 1440 or whatever the native resolution is of your panel for all three monitors at their native refresh rate of 100 hertz. Now you can see here, this one says 99 hertz. As I mentioned before, I've got one of the monitors plugged in via HDMI currently. If they were all display port, they'd all be showing 100 hertz, but that is not a problem at this stage. For the context of this video, we don't need to worry about that. So once that's done, right click on our desktop again and we go to NVIDIA control panel. And we can see here now we have our three displays all set up with custom resolutions here, 100 hertz. That one's running at the native because it's the HDMI one, but you can see custom resolutions, 100 hertz. If you've got all three plugged in via display port, they'll all look exactly the same as this. So now we go down to set up multiple displays. We click on surround spanning options, span displays with surround, apply. And we can see now we have 10320 by 1440 resolution at 100 hertz, which is exactly what we wanted. So then we just set our bezel offset as well, which in my case is two. We hit enable surround. And if all has gone well, Sometimes it can take a minute to sort of pop up again and don't be, um, don't be put off by this. It can kind of fiddle and adjust itself and, um, and do some crazy stuff initially. So it looks like everything is all good. Everything's rearranged itself on my desktop here, but we can see we span across. Everything is working just fine and dandy. So guys, that is how you fix that problem. So I'll just quickly jump in as well and show you that everything is working in my um, in my game as well. So we'll jump into F1 2018 quickly. Okay, so as you can see, everything is running in its native resolution. Our wraparound is working perfectly and there is no problems with horrible image distortion or anything like that. So guys, that is how you set up NVIDIA Surround for odd resolution panels like ultra wide displays. Now the, the process may be slightly different depending on the resolutions that you have on your particular panel, but it will be something similar to that. You just wanna make sure you go in there, delete any resolutions that are higher than your native resolution and you should be good to go. So a special shout out to John from Racecraft Simulations. He's the one who actually found this solution. I'm just simply conveying the message to you guys. But um, he spent many, many, many hours on the, uh, on the emails to both BenQ and NVIDIA support trying to sort all this out and to see a full credit to him he's done an awesome job in sharing this so that we can all benefit from it so thank you guys very much for watching the video I hope this has been beneficial for you I know that a lot of you guys have been having a lot of problems trying to set up your panels so hopefully this has got it working for you if you found the video interesting and useful please do hit the like button hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well so you don't miss the next video thank you very much for watching make sure you share this with your various different sim racing communities as well and I will see you in the next video. Bye.